Hello, welcome to my studio. You know, in art as in life, we often have uh, competing, competing voices in our head telling us about what we should be concerned about and what we should be focusing on. Um, and it's hard to sometimes kind of navigate our way through knowing when to listen to one voice and when to listen to the other. And the two most obvious ones in art, uh, in terms of if you're trying to make a career as an artist, is the one voice that's saying, we have to make money at this. Um, and the other voice that's saying, no, that should have nothing to do with this. It's all about the creative process. Um, and those, both those voices have valid points of view. Um, and what I'm going to talk about today is how I've come up with a strategy to, to, to deal with both of those voices um, in a way that's been effective for me to continue to advance my career. Yeah, so studies they, they're doing now on the mind and how the mind works, it, it's showing that there's like all of these different identities within each of us and each one of them has a point of view and that's the internal dialogue that's going on. They're each fighting um, for your attention to get their point of view put across for you to act on that. And it's, it's like really, really fascinating stuff. Um, but the thing that's really important is like, how do we go through life and kind of make choices in a way that kind of listens to the right voice at the right time um, and know when to ignore one and when to pay attention to the other. So again, those two, the two things that are like the most common kind of voice, um, that dichotomy of opposing interests is that one voice, again, this is dedicated to people who are trying to make a living as an artist. There's the one voice that says, we need to make money at this. Um, and then there's the other voice that's, that says, money should have nothing to do with this at all. This is all just about creating great art. Um, and how do you achieve both things? So I've, I've found over the years, I've come up with a strategy that kind of works for me. And that is, I try to separate it from what goes on inside the studio to what goes on outside the studio. So when I come inside the studio and once I actually start on a painting, the only thing that I want to have in my mind is how can I make this the best possible painting that I can. And that's the only concern that I have. Um, and I have faith that if I do that, that the money side will take care of itself. If this is a better painting than what I've done before, um, then it likely will sell. But outside the studio, I think an awful lot about business and I think about the money side of things. Uh, and so that could come in, the most obvious example of that is a commission, right? If somebody wants me to paint a commission for them, I used to do a, a very, formalized structured commission where the person would have a lot of input um, about what the actual painting would look like and then I would come into the studio and try and create a painting for them and that did not work out well because what I was doing during the painting process is I was thinking what would the client like um, which which is the worst possible thing to be thinking what I should have been thinking is what is going to make this the best painting possible um, and so that made me restructure my whole commission process. Now I take a very, very limited amount of input from the client. The absolute most being them referencing it to like another painting or series of paintings that I've done and them saying, I'd like something with a similar look or feel um, in a certain size. And then I will do that, but I make it clear to them too. I'm not doing this painting for them. I'm doing a painting for me that there's a good chance they will like based on prior paintings I've done that they liked. And that has been much, much more successful. So again, getting anybody else's kind of thoughts or any sort of external kind of motivators out of the studio other than what can I do to make this the best painting possible. So I'll also think in terms of, you know, if I have my show coming up um, and in terms of, okay, what's going to make this what's going to make this the most balanced show possible, I may say something like, well, I don't really have any winter scenes. Um, so I need to do two or three winter scenes because I know there are people who are coming who are going to be interested in winter scenes. So that's kind of a business 
type decision and that goes on outside the studio and then I'll go through my photos and I'll try and find images that will make the best possible painting for a winter scene based on the sizes that I've chosen so I'll also choose size I'll say I may need a 3 by 4 I'll do a 30 by 40 and a 24 by 24 um, and those thoughts are to do with the business side of things what's going to make the show more successful but then once I get into the studio the only thing I think about is what's going to make this the best painting possible that I can right when I start and what got me thinking about this was this whole process as well on this trying to speed up these paintings um, because I think about that a lot outside of the studio these paintings are taking me two or three times as long as my typical uh, style that's not that's not a good business decision to be spending time doing that if I'm selling them for the same amount of money so again the two option three options either charge more for these don't do these or speed it up so I spent a lot of time outside the studio thinking about how I can speed it up because I don't want to think when I'm painting this piece, how can I paint it faster or trying to paint faster? What I'm thinking is what do I need to do to make this the best painting possible? So all of that thinking outside the studio about what can I do that will speed this up has led to me to getting things ready in preparation for painting. So the one is, again, doing the outlines in acrylic, uh, switching to brushes that will allow me to do the same thing more effectively and more quickly, mixing my colors on the palette uh, a, a little differently so that I don't have to spend as much time mixing on the canvas, and even up to including putting my jug of water right beside me here because I find I'm cleaning my brush a lot more. I don't want to have to step over to my table to do that. So all of those things are just going to make the painting process hopefully flow a little quicker just organically. But then once I get into starting this painting, the last thing on my mind while I'm in the studio is how long this is taking me. It's taking me as long as it takes. Um, and that's kind of the whole thing that, I, that I've found has really, really um, been effective for me in kind of separating those voices. I think about all of that other stuff outside the studio and even up to the preparation for starting the actual painting but when i start the actual painting i shut out every other voice at least i try to and only focus on that artistic creative voice that says what do i need to do to make this the most effective painting it can be um, and the other thought that i have um, that kind of puts it into into practice in a sentence is while i'm in the studio painting this is my passion um, but as soon as I finish a painting, it's a product. And then the world of business takes over in terms of what do I do with that product and how do I use that product to create uh, an income, advance the brand, just all of that type of business stuff. But it is not thought of as a product while I'm working on it. While I'm working on it, this is just a physical manifestation of my passion for painting. So that's the way that I've kind of uh, come about a way to separate those voices and give them both their due, but their due in the right place in the right time. So I'm going to uh, go to the time lapse now and we'll pick it up from where I left off last one right up till now and then through till what I get done for the rest of the day.
just finished the sky area uh, and I figured this is probably a pretty good time to quit. So, so far that whole thing is working. So this is two and a half days into this painting and it's probably about 85% complete. Now the last 24 by 24 that I did took me over a week to do. Uh, so this is definitely heading in the right direction. So I'm excited about that because I do want to be able to continue to do these paintings, um, but to do them in a manner that still makes sense business-wise. Uh, and I think that's going to happen. But again, the important thing is the, while I was painting the painting, I was not trying to paint more quickly. It was more thinking about what are the things that I can do in terms of setting myself up for this process that's going to allow it to flow quicker and they're two very different uh, ways of thinking about it. So I hope you've uh, found this interesting and entertaining. Um, if you have, give me the thumbs up. If you haven't already, please subscribe, share it with your friends and I welcome your questions and comments. I'm Tim Packer and I thank you for your time.